He's jumped twice already. Yes, look at that. Oh yes, we might have a couple of decent bucks there. Oh, I've got to go to deeper water. How well is he hooked? Yes. Not that easy. What a nice crab. Yes. <laughs> oh, there's a few in there. Holy. This is living hay. Easily legal. Very similar colour, but rock hard. 65 centimetres. Coming home for dinner. Fish and chip Friday. Well, what a day this turned out to be. Got to test out the new brag mat. Got all three species off the brag mat. So I've got a barra in the esky, got a mangrove jack and three crabs already in the boat. Well, I missed that launch. Anyway, we're in. G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. Blowing 20 knots still, feels like it's been blowing for months now. Well, it actually has. Uh, no chance to get out the front in this little boat anyway. Chance of showers today. Plenty of clouds around. I did drive through some rain this morning, so I'll probably get a wet ass. Anyway, solo mission today. Got some crab pots, got some fishing rods, um, and I've actually launched at Coco Creek. So with a 20 knot forecast this afternoon, I didn't want to take on the bay in 20 knots. It is pretty rough. Um, so I've launched at Coco, and I'm tucked over in the corner of Cleveland Bay here and going to crab and fish the run out tide. So it was a three meter high this morning, running out to a 1.2, which isn't too bad. The water's quite clear. And I'll crab and fish the last of the run out and the first of the run in. Anyway, let's get into it. So due to there not being too much run today, I'm going to uh, crab the channels. So this is a channel for Coco. I'm gonna head over to Crocky as well. Uh, this channel here runs parallel to the foreshore. So this mud flat will dry off and anything that comes out of the mangroves crab wise should drop into this channel anyway. That's my theory. Anyway, here's pot number one. In about two and a half meters of water. All right, we're now in the mouth of Crocky, all mud flats over here to my right. The edge of the channel is right here. So I'm just gonna drop it in three meters of water and that'll probably all dry up, but the pot will stay in the water. This is pot two. All right, we're now on the opposite side of the creek, right next to the mud flats just here, which should pretty much dry up in about a meter and a half of water, right on the edge of the channel. It's pot three. Well, I've decided to bring the fourth pot back over to Coco. You can see it's starting to dry now. I'm in the channel, pretty close to the edge. The run isn't ridiculous, so the pots will hold. And I thought it'd be better off bringing the fourth over here. Two pots in Coco, two pots in Crocky. a bit of bait getting around and this might be the opportunity to catch some. There's some. Oh no. Got some liveys and a bloody great stick. We're back at the mouth of Crocky, got about 15 or 18 liveys, some not bad size ones. Don't know if you can see it, but the edge of the mud flat's just there, which should 
pretty much dry soon and where we rank it up there's a hole just behind us so it drops off from three meters into five and we're sitting just on the up current side of it so i drove over it saw a fair bit of life in there and we'll drop a livey down and see if we can't pick up a fish down there just back there The wind has picked up, it's blowing from straight behind me. The bay would be rough as hell, although you can't see it from here. And I think I'm gonna get wet very soon. It definitely bites. Oh, yep, yeah, I'm on. Not big, but I'm on. Oh, flathead. Wow, nice. All right, time to get another bait in the water. Another little livey. Need to go under the scales, make sure there's no scales on the tip and make sure you don't go through their spine, just above their spine for the little ones anyway. Bigger ones, rig them up, hook through the mouth. Let's see what else is down there. Almost the bottom of the tide. Uh, it's nearly 10 o'clock, low tide's just after 10. You can see the mud flats are exposed here now, still sitting in the channel. So what I might do is go and check the crab bots, rebate if needed, uh, and have fresh baits in them ready for the first part of the run-in tide. So lately the run-in tide has been crabbing much better than the run-out tide. I'll see you at the crab pot. All right. First check. I'm feeling lucky. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that is a beautiful color crab if that's a keeper. Well, there's a big Jenny in there. Massive Jenny. Definitely a few crabs. That Jenny is huge. I'm actually not sure if any of those will be keepers now. Let's have a look. Look at the size of that Jenny, my God. Let's get a measure on it. That thing is huge. She must be 20 centimeters across. That is massive. I don't think any of these would be keepers. None of them, no. We'll let these guys go. Oh. Righto, we moved about 300 metres away. We'll chuck it back in here. Second pot. Definitely a few crabs around. Let's hope there's a keeper. Oh, 
there's a couple of better sized ones there, that's for sure. Might have one, maybe two. Whoops, keep them on the floor. Now, crab check. What's this fella like? He looks like he's legal, and he is. Missing a few legs off one side. Good colour quite light actually what's that other big fella in there he looks pretty clean although he's beige he is reasonably soft don't know if you can see that that section pops in that section pops in and so does that so there is actually not much in him at all Let's check the side, very soft on the side. So he's a floater, not much weight. Looks like a good crab, but he's not. Check out this big fella. All right, this one is a different story. Easily legal, very similar color but rock hard. That is a good crab. Very hard on the side and none of the body sections are flexing at all. Very good crab, he's a keeper. I'll chuck him in the esky for now, go through the pot and then I'll tie him up in a minute. Oh, he wanted that bag. Okay, there's another one in there that could be a keeper. Not sure if he's full, they're all small ones. We'll let those go. All right, what's this one like? And here comes the rain. I'll try and get him out quickly. All right. Another soft crab. It's a shame, he's a very big crab. Measures well, probably a centimetre and a half over, but once again, very flexible. All the body sections are soft, and you can see how easy that is to push in on the side. Floater. And this one's too small. So we'll move this crab pot further out the mouth, I reckon and uh, tie this one up that we've got in the esky. All right, so we're still in the channel of Coco Creek, but I've moved much further out the front. Look at this rain coming, my God. I'm gonna get so wet. Anyway, actually, I might chuck a fresh bait in that. Rightio. Here comes the rain. This is living hay. Holy, that was hectic. Anyway, let's get this big fella tied up. He is definitely a good crab. Rock hard. A proper A grade. So, on a hard crab, if this middle section is slightly soft at all, it's a B grade. Keeping anything less than a B grade they're just no good to eat. There's not much meat in them at all. But this is 100% an A-grade crab. That middle section's rock hard. So let's get him tied up. Right, put him against the esky. Foot on him. String underneath the two flippers. Between the next leg. In that groove. String over the nipper. In the notch over the nipper 
and in the notch, pull it tight, a couple of granny knots. And there is one tied up mud crab, that easy. Is probably almost a centimetre over. Very good quality crab. Hope we get a few more. And this rain pisses off. All right. Get this thing in the boat before we get blown into shore. Take ourselves over the other side. What do we got here? Oh yes, there's possibly two keepers there. It's too small, straight up. I think the other two might be right. Good colour from what I can see. Excellent colour. You just need to let go. Right, we'll get this one out first. All right, does he measure up? Yes, he does. Now, swap hands. Now, the bottom and the top section of this crab are hard. The middle one's almost rock hard, and the side's pretty hard. Not a big crab, but he's a good eater, and he's legal, we'll take him. Now let's check out this other fella. He looks a lot better. Let's hope he measures up. All right. Yep, he's legal also. Rock hard, all three sections. Very hard on the shell too, nice crab. All right, we might rebate this pot, get it in ready for the run in tide. All right. Pot four. Under the boat. What have we got? Oh, possibly one. Don't think so though. This pot will need to be moved. All right, inside the mouth now. About a meter of water. Give that a go. All right, back to what we had planned before. Try and not get bitten by one of these things. Which may be difficult. All right. Hard surface, side of the boat. I'll tuck his claws away. Foot on him. String under your foot. Around the flipper. In the groove between the flipper and the next leg, straight over the top. And here comes some more rain. Make sure that's in the notch. Pull it tight, a few grannies. Not that easy. What a nice crab. Not huge, proper A grade crab. Next one, let's see if I can get you without biting me. Another good crab. Under the flippers, in the rain. This is getting pretty heavy now. Yep. 
All right, three crabs out of the first four pot check. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Hoping the run in tide, maybe get four more. Be seven, my bag limit. Well, at least the rain has stopped. It's proper blowing. Pretty hard to find somewhere out of the wind. Anyway, pulled up near these snags just here. Got a few liveys left. Gonna drop a couple in pretty close to there and see what happens. Still got four crab pots in. Hopefully we catch another four and bag out. Got to be something in there. Well, this is getting boring pretty quick. No action here. Might head back down towards the mouth and see where I can um, See if I can find somewhere out of the wind at the mouth also. Rightio, back at the mouth again. Just inside or outside I should say of the yellow zone. So I can run two rods here. Anyway, it's all very quiet. I'm on, I got a barra. I'm on. He's jumped twice already. Yes, look at that. Oh, right on. He's not done yet. Oh, stay connected. Stay connected. Oh, I missed the hookup. Look at that. That's what we're after. Rightio. Yes! <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. That's what we want. That's what we want. There we go. Holy. He's a definite 65 centimetre. Nice barra. He's coming home for dinner. Wow, that was exciting. Once again, how's the new brag mats? If you're keen on a new brag mat, send me a message on um, Jeffo's Fishing and Crabbing on Facebook or PM me personally. Uh, I've got a few there if you want to buy one. Thanks to Kai and the crew at Kai's Signs. Oh, yes, 65 centimetres, coming home for dinner, fish and chip Friday, thank you. Well, I think I just had another hit. I did, lost him. Let's get another one. Oh man, I just had another big hit. It's firing up. Got to stop turning the camera off. That was just a big thump on that rod. Load up and go. All right, this rod just had a whack. Looks like the bait's still swimming though. Again. I'm on again. Not jumping, got a bit of size about it. 
This is on a pretty big live mullet. That's what we want. How well is he hooked? Yes! Nice, Jack. Another nice fish. What's he? 38 centimetres. He'll be coming home too. Mangrove Jack and crispy skin barra for dinner. Nice. Well, what a day this turned out to be. Got to test out the new brag mat. Got all three species off the brag mat. So I've got a barra in the esky, got a mangrove jack and three crabs already in the boat. Still got four pots to pull. So if you're new to the channel, like what you see, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Smash that like button also. Anyway, time to head off. Let's go pull these four pots. All right, this is where I saw that big mud crab walking off the bank before. Well, he didn't go in there. Well, the forecast is definitely correct. Yes, we might have a couple of decent bucks there. Oh, I've got to go to deeper water. What's that fella like? Here's an eight, here's hard. Just under. Big crab, but I don't think he's full. No, very soft. Very soft. And he'd be too small. Way too small. All right, time to get out of here. Oh, there's a few in there. Holy. Whether there's any keepers, there might be one. I can't do it out here though. You're all gonna have to come for a ride. God, that was ridiculous out there. I reckon we do have a couple of keepers by the looks of this. And they are heavy. Oh, look at the color of these crabs. Get rid of that fish. Attacking each other. Okay, what do you like? All right, very hard crab, middle section rock hard. Let's measure him up and see if he makes it. There it is. The sunlight. Yes, he makes it. He can go on ice for now. See what else we got here. What about this fella? Another very hard crab. Very hard. 
and another keeper. I think we're going to get our bag limit here. Good day, Smith. This fella that dropped the claw. Oh, he's soft. Not even gonna measure him. Very easy to see when he doesn't have a nipper. Popping on the sides. All body sections are soft. He's too small, and you can have your claw back. Might have another one in here yet though. This fella, I think. Very nice colour crab. Hard as hell. And a keeper. That's six. You go under there, you can stay there. One to go and we bagged out and we'll upgrade. That was a heavy pot. All right, they all look too small. There's our final pot. Last pot, all we need is one and we've bagged out. Oh, and I think we might have one. Maybe, maybe not. Another hole in the bait pocket. They'll look, whoa, that was close. They're all way too small. Time to get these tied up. Nip is smaller than usual, he must have regrown that. What a great result. Ticked off all three species on the new brag mat. Got a barra, got a jack, got six mud crabs, and a flathead to boot. Fish and chip Friday.
is going to be spectacular in my house tomorrow night. Anyway, that's it for the day. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. Click the like button. See you next time.